Today, I want to share with you a passage from Acts. And if you're not familiar with the Bible, you have in the New Testament, you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are kind of like the biographies of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then you have Acts. And Acts is really the account of after the resurrection of Jesus, the birth of the church. You have the start of the church. You have uh, the Holy Spirit descending on the people. They're now filled with the Spirit. The church is born. And it's the story of those kind of early journeys of sharing the gospel, of sharing the good news of what Jesus had done, that he had risen from the dead, that our sins could be forgiven through faith in Jesus. And so Paul is a, is a key kind of part of this story. And the reason why Paul is such a key part of the story is the one who's writing it down is traveling around with, with Paul. And so there's an eyewitness side to all the things that are written here in Acts. And in Acts chapter 26, Paul is taken before Agrippa. And Agrippa is a king. And so here he is, he's standing before a king uh, because he's stirring up a little bit of controversy because he's talking about this resurrected Christ and people are starting to put their trust in Jesus. Churches are forming. And anytime there's something new, people kind of go, oh, we're, we're afraid of this. Are we losing power? Are we losing control? And so now this person who's going around sharing about Jesus to everybody is brought before the king. And he's brought before the king. And here's what he does. He doesn't pull out the Bible and go, let me let me go into some in-depth argument about Old Testament prophecy and help you understand how Jesus has fulfilled all of these prophecies, although that's powerful and that's true and that's good. Uh, he doesn't do that. He doesn't get into a philosophical debate over, you know, is there a God? Is there not a God? And the reasons why we believe that there is a God, uh, he doesn't go that route. Here's what he does. And by the way, he's the most successful evangelist in history that the church that that grew was in part because of him traveling from place to place even in persecution he continued to share about Jesus and churches began to form and so here Paul is standing before the king so what argument does he use what is what does he use to convince the king that Jesus is lord he says to the king on one of these journeys i was going he's talking about how he persecuted the church uh, because Paul before he started following Jesus, he was persecuting the church. He was having people arrested, some people even killed. He said, on one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. About noon, King Agrippa, I was on the road. I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Is it hard for you to kick against the goads? Then I asked, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. And Paul goes on. So he's quoting Jesus there. And then he goes on and he says, So then, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, first to those in Damascus and then to those in Jerusalem and in all Judea and then to the Gentiles. I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. This is why some Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. But God has helped me to this very day. So I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen, that the Messiah would suffer as the first to rise from the dead, would bring the message of light to his own people and to the Gentiles. So here's what Paul does. He tells his story. He talks about how he met Jesus and how that transformed his life. And later on, it's, you know, Agrippa's going, man, do you, you're almost getting me to faith. And, uh, and Paul says to him, that's exactly what I want for you, King Agrippa. It uh, didn't matter if it was the lowest of the low or the highest of the high. He's going, no, King, uh, I want you to experience what I've experienced. And then he goes on to say, not these chains, because he's in chains. It was not these chains, but, but the freedom that comes from knowing Jesus. He says, I want that for you. I want that for everybody. Um, but the way that he shares that, and where Agrippa's even going, man, I, I think there might be something to what this guy is saying. He just shares his story. He doesn't debate with them. He doesn't get into some kind of a, you know, philosophical or let's get into some kind of scientific debate or let's get into some kind of theological debate. He doesn't go that route. He just shares his story. 
And that's not the only time that Paul does that. In fact, anytime he's going to a new city, you'll see it throughout the book of Acts. He shares his story again and again. And he goes, I, I just have to tell you, Jesus changed my life. And I think he could change yours too. And so if you are a follower of Jesus, you have a story that's worth sharing. And that story is this, that Jesus changed your life. Uh, think about how your life would be different today had you never met Jesus. That's your Damascus Road story. And Paul would guide us. He would he, he led the example. He would instruct us uh, to share our story with people. Go, man, let me just tell you what God is doing in my life. If God has restored your marriage, uh, share that with people. If there's other couples that are going through a difficult time, tell them, hey, God helped rescue my marriage, and I think he can help you too. Or if God helped you free from addiction, you can go, hey, to those who are struggling or even those who aren't, let me just tell you the story of what God did in my life, and I think he could do the same for you. All of us, we have a story, and that story is worth sharing. I don't want to just get into debates with people all the time. We want to share the power of God's love in our life, and that will draw people in. People don't get argued into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, they're drawn to it by the Spirit of God and by our testimony. In fact, in Revelation, it says that Satan, in the end, is going to be defeated by the blood of the Lamb, by what Jesus did on the cross, and by the word of our, our testimony, by us attesting to the power of that blood to transform lives, his sacrifice that compels us to follow him, to live different, to demonstrate our faith through our lives. That's what's going to draw people to faith in Jesus. I'm going to pray that God would use us to help share our story and to help draw people in to his kingdom. Father, for each one of us, we have a story and each story is unique. Uh, would you give us a boldness to share? Would you give us opportunities to share our story? And may we not shrink down in those moments, but might we press in, just like Paul led by example, sharing his story. May we share our story with others. Uh, maybe it's sharing our story with our kids of how we came to faith, uh, sharing our story with family members or neighbors or coworkers. Um, God, you've done so much work in the lives of those that are, are part of our church. May we be able to share that story in a way that, that draws people in to experience the same. And may there be more and more stories next year because we were bold enough to share our story. Help us with this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.